The purpose of this video is to help you learn how to compute the net present value of a given investment using Excel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the investopedia.com example about a man who has a pizza shop and chooses whether to buy a pizza oven or not. So here's the scenario. He owns a pizza shop and he realizes that he needs a new pizza oven that will cost him $20,000 today. So that's period zero. That would be today. The present value of that outflow would be $20,000. There's been no passing of time, so we do not need to discount this payment back to today because the payment happens today. Now, this pizza oven is going to help him earn an additional $5,000 per year for the next six years. On a cash-on-cash -cash basis, we're looking at $10,000 more cash coming in than the original 20,000 that came out. So 30,000 comes in versus the 20,000 went out. And on a cash on cash basis, this looks like a pretty good idea. However, this, this $5,000 six years from now is not worth as much as $5,000 today due to the time value of money. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take each of these lump sum payments and discount them back to period zero. So for example, if he normally earns 10% on his money or would have to, or if he could invest in a bond at 10%, he wants to make sure that this investment in a pizza oven would get him a better return than 10%. So if the net present value turns out to be greater than zero, then this is a good idea. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to compute the present value at 10%. That's 10% per year. The number of periods discounted back. So it's at, this payment will happen at the end of year one. So we're discounting it back one year to today is one year. There is no regular payment. This is a single lump sum payment. So it's not a PMT. It's not an, an annuity, regular stream of payments. And the future value in this case is the $5,000 at the end of year one. And since the payment will be made at the end of the period, we can click on that zero, or we could just leave it as the default and leave that blank and it'd still come out right. So what this is saying is if you were to discount $5,000 back one year, it's worth 4545 today. Since it's an inflow, I'm going to change this to minus PV to show a cash inflow. Now just to prove what's happening, what this is saying is if you had $4,545.45 today and earn 10% on that money, you would have $5,000 a year from now. Let's prove that out. If you had $4,545 today plus the interest on that at 10%, you get to $5,000. So uh, that's just proving out that this, this did work. All right, so now I'm going to write this in a way that I can just copy it across. I want the rate to always refer to cell B2, so I hit the F4 button to fix, to anchor that. Uh, the number of periods, I want it to be a, a relative reference, so to refer to period 2, 3 as I copy this over. And the future value, I want that to refer to the future value of 2, 3 as I copy that over. So I'm going to leave those as they are, so copy it all over. And you see, the further out these payments go, the less they are worth today using the concept of time value of money. If I wanted to compute the net present value of all these, I could just go sum and sum them all. Because I'm netting the outflow against the inflow, and the net present value is 1,776. So what this says is that this project is actually returning a rate of return greater than 10%. That's why the net present value turned out to be a positive number and therefore considering two alternatives this seems to be the better alternative than something that only earns 10 percent now another way of computing net present value is to go like this type equals and just pick up your initial cash outflow as that negative so we have this cash outflow of twenty thousand dollars and we're then going to add the net present value at ten percent for these payments, okay? And the computer recognizes this is one year, two year, three years, so it's discounting the 
one that's at the end of period six back six years. It does all that math for you, and you see it comes out to be exactly the same. Now, some people watching this video will say, well, since the payment is exactly the same, did you really need to use net present value? The answer is, uh, no, you didn't. You could have done it this way. This is another MPV proof, but this is only if the payments are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the original 20,000 outlay plus the present value of 10%. Number of periods is 6. But this time we're going to say the payment is $5,000. So this is a, a regular payment of the same amount. And that's a key point here. It's of the same amount. And the future value would be nothing. And the payments are made at the end of the period. And I believe I'm going to have to make this a minus PV. See if that came out right. Yes. So that would be another way. Now the problem with this is if the payments are different. Let's say this is 8,000 and this is 9,000. Um, this bottom feature doesn't work because the payment has to be the same. So I would just delete this. And as you can see, uh, this formula, the NPV formula, will work with varying payments as will discounting each item individually and doing the net present value. Uh, that would work as well. So I hope this makes sense. Once again, if the net present value turns out to be a positive number, that's an indication that this investment will return a rate of return greater than 10%, usually indicating that that's a good idea.